Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, everyone. I think we're ready to begin. My name is Rob Altamont, VP Marketing for Harico Golf, and I'll be your moderator for today's Harico webinar titled Shaft Sorting, Weight, and Frequency. The webinar will be led by Harico's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Some of you have heard my little spiel here uh, many times before. It only takes about a minute. Uh, Jeff has worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in his best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making and Total Club Fitting in the 21st Century. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available for sale online at hericogolf.com. And as a side note, Jeff's uh, rewritten the fifth edition of uh, Modern Guide to Club Making, and that should be coming out around hopefully February or March. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, and it's going to be in four color, uh, full color print, too. Your audio settings are muted, which means we cannot hear you. So don't worry about coughing or phones ringing in the background. If you look at your GoToWebinar dashboard located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the box labeled Question. If you expand this box, you'll see empty space for you to type any questions or problems you may have throughout the webinar. Because we have limited time, we are saving the question and answer period for the end when Jeff has completed his talk. Feel free to type any questions you may have, and I'll make sure time providing that we'll get to them at the end. If for any reason you must leave the webinar, don't worry. It is being recorded and will be posted on youtube.com slash golf and on our blog at blog.haricogolf.com. So having said all that, I'd like to turn it over to our technical guru, Jeff Summit. Thank you, Rob, and uh, thank all of you today for taking the time to attend today's webinar on shaft sorting. In our last webinar, we discussed the principles of swing weighting, which I hope you have a better understanding on tolerances and why swing weighting is a form of not only quality control, but how to react properly to reduce them. Much like swing weighting, this webinar is going to talk about tolerances and how to properly uh, react to them. Uh, I'm going to discuss shafts, uh, sorting shafts prior to tip trimming or any other assembly procedure and the reasons why. Plus, swing weighting and shaft sorting do go hand in hand. As shafts come through the door, whoops, let me uh, flip the screen here. Okay, As shafts come through your door, it's usually a good practice to sort the shafts and mark them properly. As a club maker, even in a busy shop, uh, you're always going to have some downtime. And that downtime could be used to clean the workshop area, to take care of paperwork, and you guessed it, sort shafts. The thing is, it takes very little time uh, to do it. And once I explain it, um, it only takes a, few, uh, a little bit of time. So. I think the days that the, the club makers are stocking large inventories of shafts in their shops are long over. Rather, most club making shops are, on a, are, are ordering on a need be basis. So there's no more important reason to sort shafts ahead of time to identify the tolerances and possibly problems prior to any assembly. I'm going to uh, first start talking about um, steel shafts and sorting them by weight and then by frequency. These uh, same principles will apply to the graphite models when I get to that later. I'm also going to discuss um, or talk about using the tolerances to your advantages. Okay, in this uh, next slide, we're going to weigh 10 steel shafts at random. And uh, so you know that I'm not pulling out anything from underneath my sleeve. These are the least expensive steel shafts in our catalog, and nothing expensive like Dynamic Gold, which had been previously weight sorted. That's one reason why Dynamic Gold shafts are more expensive, because the fine folks at True Temper have already done that for you. What's the difference between an inexpensive steel shaft and one a slightly more expensive? Well, the, the very inexpensive steel shafts typically have fewer number of steps in them, thus um, uh, allowing uh, less processing in the manufacturing um, uh, time. These are also referred to commercial grade shafts, which are less expensive because the tolerances aren't as tight as the first quality shafts. 
instead of plus or minus 3 grams for a first quality shaft, commercial grade shafts may be closer to plus or minus 5 grams. Therefore, fewer shafts are rejected. Chances are, with these shafts, you're making a set that consists of 8 irons, like 4 through sand wedge. Maybe you buy a couple extra sh uh, shafts so you have them on hand to do some repairs, or have a few spares just in case you decide to add to the set later in the future. What you want to do is first mark the weight of each shaft on the butt end with the Sharpie pen, and just continue with as many um, shafts as you have. And years from now, if you remove the grip and the grip tape, you might very well see what the original weight of that shaft was. And that might come in handy if you're ever doing repair. In our example here, we didn't see that near a great uh, a range in the, the weights. And that's a testament to the quality of steel shafts, um, uh, even though that they're, um, these particular ones were classified as commercial grade. Yes, it's still almost six grams of weight, but that's still very manageable. The first thing to know about steel shafts is they're homogeneous. And that's just a fancy way of saying that the shafts are made of the same material throughout, unlike a graphite or composite shaft, which could be made of various materials. If you have two identical steel shafts, but one is heavier than the other, where does that extra weight come from? Well, because the lengths are the same, the only plausible explanation is that the walls are slightly thicker, and this is going to make the shaft stiffer because you have more material resisting the shaft from bending. So there is a right way and a wrong way to place these shafts in the different club heads. I should also note that we're only weight sorting for unitized or parallel tip iron shafts rather than taper tip steel shafts. The taper tip steel shafts, you're purchasing a dedicated shaft for each um, club uh, that's available in a particular length. So there's no sorting whatsoever. You're stuck with whatever tolerances that you get. What we're going to do is we're going to sort the shafts in the order of their weight. In our example, we're only going to be using eight of the ten shafts. So we can decide ahead of time which shafts we want to reserve for repairs, which are normally individual clubs rather than trying to match a whole set. But if we were going to use all 10, uh, the principles are going to remain the same. Okay, What do we know about shaft fitting? In some cases, a shaft that's too stiff will be more prone to a ball flight that's going to be lower, or um, a ball flight that might um, be more prone to pushing or, or slicing the ball, uh, whereas a shaft that's too flexible may result into a greater amount of dispersion. So let's think about this for a second. The four iron, uh, for most, is already hard to hit. It's less lofted, and if anything, I bet more golfers will push or fade that club than any of the others that we're building here. So we put the light.